Welcome to Financial Issues, where we join reality with truth, helping you make the most of your money by honoring God with your investments. Now listen in as we give you the practical tools and advice you need to become a biblically responsible investor. Good morning. Welcome to Financial Issues. I'm your host, Shanna Burt. Thanks for tuning in today. If it's your first time tuning into this program, we hope that you're going to stick around and find out more about what we do. Financial Issues is a ministry that helps to educate people from a biblical worldview about the financial issues that we're dealing with every day. We have a partnership where you can partner with this ministry. You'll get access to asset allocation models and a buy list for stocks that you should consider owning that are not participating in the uh, moral degradation that is happening in corporate America. We have corporations that are funding darkness. They are funding agendas that don't line up with Christian values like abortion, uh, lifestyle issues like the LGBTQ issue, human rights violations, and so many other things. And so we help you defund darkness by screening out those companies. We also encourage you to fund the light. Uh, We believe that everything belongs to God, everything that we have comes from God, and that we should at least use a fraction of those things that come to us um, in the way of finances to fund the light, to fund the work of the kingdom in the earth because the kingdom of darkness has plenty of funding itself. On today's show, we're going to talk a little bit about how to get started with investing with limited funds. We're going to answer some of your questions. And then toward the end of the show, our friend Jason McDowell is going to join us to talk about Aunt Irma and how to potentially avoid this hidden tax that she imposes. Um, Also, election season is in full swing. We have the election coming in just two weeks. Early voting has started in so many places. We encourage you, do not put your head in the sand. Get to the voting booth and bring your values into the voting booth with you. If you listen to the show on Friday, we had Debbie What Now with I Voter Guide on at the very end of the program. If you do podcasts and you only want to hear that, make time to go back and listen to the last 15 minutes of the show on that date. Um, we have a great interview with Debbie, and I'm sure by now our... Um, our our people at Financial Issues have generated a clip of that interview, and we hope that you will find it on social media, all the places that you do social media on, and share that with all of your Christians, Christian friends who are considering sitting this election out. All right. Our stewardship verse today comes from Proverbs 13, 20. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. What do you think, Seth? It's a good verse, Jenna. You know, the uh, main point of this verse is to surround yourself with those who are wise, and in so doing, you will uh, become wise. And I think this is an, an issue of common sense here, really, that the, the wise, the uh, wiser you want to become, a good thing to do is just spend time with wise people. On the other hand, if you spend time with fools, it's a good chance that you'll become more of a fool. And so let's take <laughs> advantage of the gift God's given us, wise counselors. You know, God oftentimes shows his wisdom and teaches us through the people around us. He uses the people around us who are older, people who are wiser, have more tread on their tires, and who desire that we grow in holiness and sanctification. So I, I, I really do hope that there there are no lone wolf Christians out there. Uh, I actually think that's something of an oxymoron, Shanna, that if, right. you're, you know, if you're a Christian, you need people around you uh, to build you up. So uh, let us, let us do that today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And in fact, there was a meme I saw. It was like a description of, I'm a Christian, but I don't need the church. Uh, it was this, uh, this group of uh, zebras in the background and this one zebra in the foreground running away from a pack of lions. And it's like, that's exactly what it is. You know, you need yeah, the church. You need is. the church. True. Well, you know, on Friday, we talked a lot about fools as the scripture defines them as those who don't know uh, God at all or those who reject God. That's what the Bible uh, describes as fools. And the fate of the ignorant and the fool is destruction. So we also know that we're not to be uh, yoked with unbelievers in, in relationships of high importance, right? Like marriage, like, um, uh, you know, getting advice about finances and and different things like that. And 
we will suffer harm when we become companions of fools. You know, that's that's what the scripture says. We don't have to necessarily be a fool to reap the destruction. If we're hanging out with them, a lot of times we'll get what they get. You know, so we, we can apply that wisdom when we think about who we ask to help us with our financial issues, whether that's a family member, a financial professional, a friend, a pastor, coworker, et cetera. Um, we, we have to be really aware aware of who we are um, taking our advice from. So that brings us kind of to our topic today. What, what is yeah. the topic? So this this topic, Shannon, is a partner question from Brenda. And she, it centers around this idea of stock slices. But here's her question. Do any of the companies that would align with biblically responsible investing options offer stock slices? A family member is offering to help start my teenagers in buying stock slices, but the link they sent had companies that I would not want to support. So I think Brenda's really just looking for some help uh, for, for her uh, you know, teenagers as they're trying to get started, surrounding with wise counsels we were talking about. But just to follow up, Shanna, to start, what is a stock slice? Exactly. Yep. Well, from the context of her question, I'd never actually heard of a stock slice, but yeah. I kind of got the gist of what she was talking about just through the uh, context of the question. So I looked it up and, you know, a stock slice is not an industry term. Rather, it's a, a particular discount brokerage's uh, terminology for buying what's called fractional shares. That means that you don't have to buy a whole share. So if you only have $20 and you want to buy a share of stock that's $40, you really can only afford half of a share of stock. And normally you can't do that, but, um, there are brokerage firms that will allow you to buy fractional shares with little to no commission because think about this if you're buying uh even if you're buying one share of stock that's twenty dollars and a commission were thirty dollars for the commission it, it would not make a lot of sense to do that so this is a way that a certain brokerage firm has made available for people to um, start investing with limited funds they can get these fractional shares with little to no commission and it can be a great way to build a portfolio over time using a principle that we call dollar cost averaging. It's a, uh, it's a systematic investment of money at, at regular intervals over time. And it's a great way to build a portfolio. And, you know, I looked at. Um, really briefly, this this uh, particular discount brokerage's platform, and you know she's right. There are a lot of companies that they offer that are not biblically responsible because they they make available though all of the five hundred stocks that are in the S and P, roughly five hundred stocks that are in the S and P five hundred. So. Um, the good news, Brenda, is that there are some companies in the S and P 500 that uh, are biblically responsible. So you can use our screening tool on our website. Just go to resources and drop down to evaluator, and you can screen through and you can see um, which companies are clean. Better yet, um, refer to our buy list and see which companies from our buy list are available for purchase. Mm, good stuff, Shanna. And then what other wisdom would you have for Brenda as she's trying to help her teenagers uh, begin their investment journey? Yeah. So what I would say is this is a great opportunity, Brenda, for you to uh, minister our stewardship verse of the day to this friend who is offering to help shape the minds of your children. I think it's a great thing that they want to um, share financial literacy with them. Um, and so it's a great opportunity now for you to share back what you know about biblically responsible investing and sort of refine the filter of what's going to be offered to your children. It's also a great opportunity to minister to your children and to fulfill that obligation that we have to bring our children up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. So it's a good thing for you to be able to teach your children how to invest or to allow this friend to help your, your children teach your uh, children how to invest. But it's much more important to teach them not to compartmentalize their faith in Christ and to teach them to honor God in everything that they do, even the unlikely um, topics like investing. So, you know, you can teach them at a very, very young age. You can teach them first that they need to, um, as they're vetting out these companies that they're going to consider owning, to vet out first whether or not they're engaged in any activity that would make your children complicit 
in the company's promotion of sin. Because if a company is funding sin and we become an owner of it, we are complicit, we are an uh, accomplice to promoting or, or to funding that sin as well. So great question, Brenda. Great opportunities for you to to minister to your friend in the way that um that they approach their investing and to really cement some firm, uh, good principles, biblical principles in your children as they start to think about investing. All right, folks, uh, we gotta, we're got we coming up on a break here, but stay tuned. We're going to come back and we're going to answer some of the questions that you've sent in to us. So don't go anywhere. My name is Valtasia. I have five kids total. I was basically a single mom. I didn't have an address to my name. And here it comes, you know, that not just one baby I'm finna have, it was three. I honestly was not gonna keep them. I had it in my mind, deep down inside, that I couldn't do it. I came to a straight abortion minded. What changed my mind was I talked to the counselor and, you know, very encouraging. They'll also tell me, you know, you're not gonna be alone. You know, if you need any you know reach out to us or anything I was amazed I definitely have a challenge of having my babies a lot of people will ask me how do you do that you know how do you maintain only thing I can say is prayer like prayer really really works to donate just dial pound 250 and say the keyword baby or go to financialissues.org and click on the pre-born banner how is Timothy Plan continuing to lead the fight as you guys now enter your fourth decade uh, of, of leading this fight of, of biblically responsible investing? We've been too silent for too long and we can no longer be silent. You stand up uh, like Ronald Reagan said, you know, we're only one generation away from losing all of our liberty. Yeah. It has to be fought for. Mm -hmm. I wish it didn't. Uh, and you can fight for it. You don't need guns and ammunition on that. You can fight for it, especially with your dollars, because it's always about the money. Mm. And when the money uh, starts impacting people, they start paying attention. Uh, you know, when we launched this, they said it couldn't be done, yeah. but here we are 30 years later. Uh, they said you couldn't get competitive returns, but here we are. What a tremendous testament of God's grace. Go to financialissues.org forward slash Timothy Plans to learn more about Timothy Plan. Welcome back to Financial Issues. I'm your host, Shanna Burt. Thanks for sticking with us. Seth, we want to answer some questions? Sure do, Shanna. Let's get it started with CJ. I had a question on social media from Tennessee recently asking about FP70, Shanna. It says FP70 has an, adjust, an, an adjustable rate and is now well over $27 per share. CJ says as interest rates go down, this preferred will likely drop in share value when it adjusts to a lower dividend. So will we be in a trap with a low dividend rate, a low share value, and could it be called at $25? So a capital loss as well? Am I missing something here? What would you have for CJ? Well, CJ, I guess those things are, are all potentially possible. We don't think that they're very likely, though. It is still on the buy list. And, you know, I think it is, um, it's, it's, it's okay where it is. Does he say, does he say he owns it? I, I, I assume about buying he it? does. Um, okay. He doesn't say if he owns it or not, but based on the question, it sounds like he probably does. Yeah. So, no, I, I think it's fine. I mean, it is still on the buy list. If there's a reason that we think it needs to be sold, then we will send out a sell warrant for it. Awesome. Joseph is up next, Shanna, from Florida, Neptune Beach, saying good morning. Which is more important for a 75-year-old income investor as my CDs mature? Should I take advantage of buying opportunities or continue to build my cash reserves above the cash sector allocation? What do you think? So, Joseph, I mean, I guess it depends on how much you already have in cash. Um, you know, we have our asset allocation models that we have not changed, but we, for uh, more than a couple of months now, we've been signaling to the partners, um, and not just signaling, but just flat out telling you in, in our commentary that we, we believe it's prudent to have 
a little bit more cash right now. So cash is still um, paying somewhere around 5%. CDs have dropped, so we're kind of off of that laddering strategy. Now, if you followed the laddering strategy, you should be able to, or you should have locked in that 5% or higher rate for at least another, um, you know, 12 to 18 months. So that's the, uh, that laddering strategy has worked out really, really nicely, I believe, for the partners. So what I would do right now is uh, consider just letting those cash reserves build up. You know, we have the election coming in in just a couple of weeks, and um, there could definitely be some volatility depending on the outcome of the election. I think the worst volatility would come if we don't have... um, closure on election results right away or in a really a really timely manner if if there is some um, dispute over the outcome of the election I think that that would be where probably the most volatility would come from I am expecting um, that there would be not a sweep one way or another like and, and and what I mean is the president, um, the office of the president, and both chambers of Congress being one color after the election. Um, so I think that, like I said, the most volatility could potentially come from not getting election results right away or there being some kind of major upset with election integrity, um, so on and so forth. So... We want to have some powder dry in case there are, there is some volatility that is temporary that we could we could take advantage of and maybe um, scoop up some shares at some decent prices. Also, depending on the outcome of the election, the pockets of opportunity are likely going to look a little bit different. The AI um, trend is still going to be firmly in place, I do believe, but. What's going to happen in energy is going to look a lot different. <laughs> you know, these companies that are that have that have tanked in value, that have been all in on the green agenda, the you know the solar panel um, and, the, and the green stocks that have just plummeted uh, may get a little bit of a revitalization if it's a Harris win. Um, oil companies will probably, you know, they've been sort of in the tank uh, lately, they'll probably get a little shot in the arm if it is a, a Trump win. So um, just some of the things that, that we're looking at. And uh, so I think it's good wisdom to consider being a little bit heavy in cash right now. Awesome. Hey, Shannon, speaking of the election, can I just say for our listeners that we have a great opportunity to get your hands on some awesome FISM merch if you donate to the ministry, Spineless Weasels t-shirt. We actually gave the shirt out at the retreat. I think it was we had it promoted for the retreat yeah. a couple of years ago. So make sure that you do that. If you donate any amount to the ministry up until the election, we'll send you this. Just request your shirt and size in the notes section. I wanted to jump on that opportunity, Shannon, as you were mentioning the election there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And do it now so you yeah. can wear it to the voting booth. Yeah, yeah that's exactly <laughs> right. That's ex- it, it is a nice shirt. It's pretty pretty cool. <laughs> Let's make our voices heard about the spineless weasels. Anyway, Brad is up next here, Shanna, uh, saying, help, I'm down this much in each company. He mentioned several companies in the percentages or the, uh, the uh, dollar values that he's down in. Should I buy more of the companies mentioned if they're on the broad list or should I hold them? Should I hold all, sell the ones that are not on the broad list? Um, and then he mentioned some of of them were never on the buy list at any point. What advice would you have for Brad, who's 55? Well, um, so Brad, you may have had these stocks before you started following our strategy, or maybe um, you kind of missed that rule about not buying off the broad list, or, or maybe you just did it anyway. Um, what I would suggest to you, though, is to get rid of those, um, unless you're you feel like you're um, qualified and have the time to uh, follow those stocks and make decisions on them because if they're not on our broad list, you're not ever going to get a sell alert for them because we're not watching them. So um, the the ones that are not on the broad list, that's going to have to be your call because it's not something that, that we are currently following. And like I said, you'll never get a sell alert on them. Um, if they are if you bought them off the broad list in the past, 
um, you may want to check to see if they're still on the broad list because over the last few months, we've done a lot of cleaning up of the broad list. Our broad list has uh, shrank from roughly 400 securities to under 300 now. So we removed a lot of companies that were on our broad list that were really just kind of sort of a watch list in the past. They had never actually made it onto the buy list. So again, you know, if it's not on the broad list, it's not something that you'll get any future guidance from us on. So you'll have to make that decision about whether you want to continue to monitor those companies or not. As far as adding two, positions that are down um, and he does give a, a really long list there we won't mention all of them on the air but I only see one that I would consider right now and it is on the buy list it's TE26 Awesome. Thank you, Shanna. This next one's an interesting one from Mark. Uh, he's wondering if uh, we were aware of a, a new EU law that may compromise many of the companies that we invest in. So he shared a link of a recent interview from a fellow named Justin Haskins, who went on Ali Beth Stuckey's program over on The Blaze. Uh, really, really interesting interview here, Shanna. Do you have any thoughts on what is talking about here? Yeah, I did see that interview. And it. you're right. It was a very interesting yeah. interview Pretty and uh, yeah it is and uh, I, th I think we're trying to work on getting getting Justin yeah. to come, I'm, come on actually, the program here right I'm emailing back and forth with Justin as we speak so we're trying to okay. get him on soon yeah so yeah stay tuned Mark we, we may br yeah. be bringing Justin on the program here but it is a very interesting law that the EU um, did pass and it really is their way of enforcing um, ESG and DEI uh, philosophies on the companies that do business in the EU. So it sort of holds them accountable if they do any, and it's companies of a certain size, so larger companies, but if they do business in the EU, if they want to have access to the market, uh, to the consumers in the EU, then they're going to have to follow certain guidelines that are, um, that come out of the ESG space, the, the DEI space. So think diverse, diversity, equity, inclusion. Think of the, the biggest DEI hire in the United States, which is the current vice president <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's running for president and how well that has turned out. Um, so, you know, DEI practices are bad for business. I mean, they lower morale. Um, you know, they, they force companies to focus on, things that nobody should focus on. And the pigmentation in a person's skin, whether it makes them uh, black or white, brown or yellow or whatever it is, should not come into play at all when a person is being considered for a job, um, period. It's just, it's, it's just not right. Um, so it is definitely something that could have a big impact because from what I understand, it not only applies to these big companies, but then it makes those big companies the big brother or the watchdog or the enforcer for all of the people that they do business with because the uh, penalty is huge. It's a percentage of the company's global sales that would be a fine that the EU could collect on. So it not only tries to force these big companies into um leftist compliance, uh, you know, compliance with leftist agendas, but it also makes them the enforcer to everyone that they do business with. So um, if that were to happen, it could have a big impact on the number of companies that uh, the universe of companies that we could actually invest in. Now, I think if Trump wins the election, <laughs> I think this thing will be snuffed out, <laughs> at least for, for U.S. companies, which, which they already have um, deals in place that exempt certain industries that um, give them a lot of money. So, yeah. um, it is a very interesting topic. Absolutely. Yeah, Shannon, just picture this for a second. You're flying in a commercial flight, hitting some turbulence, haven't heard anything from the pilot. You're worried, but the, your comforting thought is at least our pilot, I know she's a black lesbian woman. That gives me comfort. <laughs> That's DEI hiring. No, you want a pilot who can land a plane. And I'm not saying that black lesbian women right. can't land planes. But what I'm saying is so many of these companies are doing that is exactly right. And, and you, you hit the nail on the head there. Uh, this is really scary stuff and may it never come to pass. 
Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. A uh, quick one here to end, Shanna. We have Taylor is asking, I have a question for which I'm hopeful you can provide me guidance. Christian CFP, about $300,000 approximately 20 years ago. It's now valued at approximately 225000 What should I do, if anything? Um, a CFP is a certified financial yeah, planner. Right. If you, you invested $300,000 <laughs> 20 years ago and you've got 225000 considering what just the market has done over the last 20 years, they should be fired immediately. Yep. Yep. It's good Personal stuff. Personal opinion. Yep. Yep. Consider doing that, it. <laughs> Consider becoming a partner and, yeah. um, you know, putting together a portfolio that is uh, hopefully not only potentially can do better than that, but one that honors God. Well said. Well, folks, uh, if you're listening on an outlet that only hears the short version of the show, we hope you have found a way to catch the entire show, whether that's by podcast, social media, or our phone app. For the rest of you, we've got more financial issues to come, so don't go anywhere. Stick around. We'll be back. Is inflation, national debt, and volatility in the markets causing you anxiety? Well, you're not alone. I'm Shanna Burt, host of Financial Issues, a nationally syndicated, biblically-based program. During our daily program, we help you navigate the current financial climate and provide valuable insights so that you can be a good steward with the money that God has blessed you with. The Bible tells us not to worry and to seek wise counsel, and that's why Financial Issues is here. Join our partnership community by visiting financialissues.org slash join. Hi, this is Sheena Burt, the host of Financial Issues. The Financial Issues family is so blessed to have saved tens of thousands of babies, all thanks to the generous support of you, our listeners and viewers. For $140, you can sponsor five ultrasounds. Please go to preborn.org. That's preborn.org or financialissues.org and click on the preborn logo. Save a baby, save a life. Our founder, Dan Celia, often lamented the weakness of politicians on both sides of the aisle, having no spine to stand up for what is right. Our generation has raised up a bunch of weasels. We don't have the people that have fortitude. Oh, they may have some faith, but they don't have the fortitude that is needed. Where did all those spines on Capitol Hill go anyway? There are so-called leaders in Washington that have a title of a leader, so they think they are a leader, and they couldn't lead their way out of a paper bag. For a limited time, Financial Issues will send you a No More Spineless Weasel shirt or travel mug with any contribution. We just ask that you consider covering the cost of shipping and handling. Get your Spineless Weasel shirt today. Support Financial Issues and let everyone know how floppy politicians can be. Go to financialissues.org slash donations to get your shirt or travel mug. Again, that's financialissues.org slash donations. I'm John. I'm Debbie, and we're Samaritan members. We have eight children, uh, ages from 30 down to 15, and we have a ministry called Family Man Ministries. When he left the pastorate to start the ministry, we had no income for about a year potentially, and so we were living on almost nothing. The cost of health care seemed impossible because we had a big family. And so when I started researching ministries, there was no comparison. It was just the best deal. And so a year after we joined, my 10-year-old daughter at the time got pneumonia, and it was scary. Someone sent a card just to Maggie, and it said, not just that we're praying for you, but that God will always take care of you, and here's $5 for you to go out and get ice cream. It was just really special. To make that connection, that's an amazing thing. I was sold on Samaritan Ministries. I just thought, okay, I'm a part of this. Securities offered through G.A. Reppel & Company, a registered broker, dealer, and investment advisor, member FINRA and SIPC. Opinions expressed by Shanna are hers alone and are for informational purposes only and do not necessarily represent those of G.A. Reppel or the outlet on which you are listening. You should consider how the information applies to your situation prior to personally implementing it and consult any financial professional you work with to make sure it's applicable to your financial plan. Hey, welcome back, folks. 
Seth here. I'll be with you this segment here, and then we've got Shanna returning next segment with Jason McDowell. But uh, before we get there, I'd be remiss if I did not just remind you of what we mentioned earlier in the program. We are in the middle of election season now, and so uh, we're doing a little pretty sweet FISM giveaway for these next couple weeks. Uh, we want you to have the opportunity to get your hands on some pretty awesome FISM merch, as you've heard earlier in the show. Our founder, Dan Celia, possessed a righteous disdain for what he called the spineless weasels of Washington, D.C. Those were people on both sides of the aisle. Uh, usually we think of Democrats as well as establishment Republicans uh, and even some professing Christians in Washington, D.C. as well uh, who have no spine. They will not stand up for what is right. Uh, maybe they're just in it for the money. Maybe they're in it for the glory. Uh, maybe they got in genuinely thinking I'm going to make real change and then the uh, poison of Washington, D.C. finally got to them. So we want to make our voices heard and say no more spineless weasels. So if you make a donation to FISM for any amount over the next couple weeks, you will receive this beauty right here, this bad boy, the No More Spineless Weasels t-shirt that you can wear to the polling office on election day. And we'll also throw in one of these sweet FISM No More Spineless Weasels tumblers. So make sure to make your donation today. Uh, if you go to financialissues.org slash donate, financialissues.org slash donate, uh, excuse me, let me say that again, FISM.TV slash donations. Best way to go is go to financialissues.org and just click the donate banner at the top. That takes you right to the page where you can donate. If you're going to do it online, folks, make sure you specify in the donation line your shirt size. I will say we have a, a, a numerous um, variety of shirt sizes. However, we have limits on each one. So uh, we may have a fewer number of smalls than we do of extra large. So if you know your size, make sure to get it in immediately because we might run out of that size before you know it. Uh, so we want to make sure to make that available to you all. Donation of any amount. If you've already got one, I know some of you have. Uh, maybe this would be a great early Christmas gift for your left-leaning in-laws, something like that. You know, just throwing that out there. So it could be, could be fun there. But make sure to get your hands on this awesome merch today. We'll be offering these for the next two weeks up until Election Day. Quickly here, folks, markets on Friday, they were on the rise uh, and they finished well on Friday. Uh, the Dow Jones up a tenth of a percent. The S&P 500 was up four tenths. The NASDAQ up six tenths. All time highs for the S&P and the NASDAQ this week. For the week, actually, the Dow Jones finished uh, almost one percent. Same with the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, about four fifths of a percent. So it was a good week overall for the markets. The pre-markets were a little bit down this morning and that's where they sit right now. Right near the flat line, actually. The NASDAQ just broke positive. S&P and the Dow Jones and still just below the flat line. Uh, that's what we're looking like for the markets this week, folks. I want to continue the conversation that we just finished with Shanna. Uh, this was a great clip, actually, Shanna did several months ago. As, uh, and this is um, kind of coming alongside. There's a little bit of a bonus here for our TV audience, a bit of a visual aid Shanna did on dollar cost averaging, how it works, and how to use it well. Great information here from our host, Shanna Burt, on what is dollar cost averaging. We talk a lot about dollar cost averaging in our strategy. And um, we get asked a lot of times, what exactly does that mean? What does dollar cost averaging mean? Well, I'm gonna break it down very simply. If you have a piece of paper handy, grab your piece of paper. And what I want you to do is to write a big V on the paper. And I think we're going to have this up on the screen as well. Yep, we do. So write a big V on the screen there. And I'm going to tell you a story about a guy that went into the cattle business. So he didn't have a lot of money to get his small business started. So, and don't tell Craig Halgert this story because these prices are way off when it comes to cows, but this is for illustrative purposes only. So um, the guy went down to market and he brought his $100. He was going to plan on investing $100 in his business every month, and he was going to get however many cows he can get for $100. So he goes down, and the price of a cow, he notices, is $100. So he gives him his $100, and he gets one cow. The next month, he goes down to the market and with his $100, and the price of a cow now, he sees as $50. So he's like, oh, sale. Two for one, you know, good deal. He gives him his $100, he gets his two cows, and he goes on home. Well, the next month, he goes down to market with his $100, and he sees that the price of a cow is now $25. And he says, oh, something must be terribly wrong here. This is, uh, I made a big mistake getting into this business, and this just isn't good. You know, there's these rumors of mad cow disease and all of these different things. So, he goes ahead, gives him his $100, and he gets four cows and goes back home. 
the next month. But he also makes a decision. He says, this was a terrible idea. And when the price of a cow gets back to 100, I'm out. So he goes back in the fourth month and the price of a cow is back up to $50. He gives him his $100 and he gets two cows. Fifth month, he goes back. Finally, the price of a cow is back to $100. He buys his cow. He goes home and uh, he starts thinking about what he said when the price of a cow was at $25. And he's like, this is just too stressful for me. I'm taking all these cows back down there and I'm selling them all. So you can see there, he ends up with 10 cows. He sells them all for $100 a piece. And he takes his $1,000 and he goes home. And at tax time, he gets all of his things together. And he he walks into a CPA's office with his head hung down. He said, I really I did a really stupid business move this year. You know, here's all of my stuff. Well, when he comes back, he's surprised to find out that over those five months, he invested $500. And he sold all of his cows for $1,000. So he ended up with a $500 Profit. That means that he made 100% on his business deal. Now, I don't know if he decided to go back down there and buy more cows, but this is just kind of an illustration of how dollar cost averaging works because the markets are volatile. So if you are going to be disciplined and set to spend a set number, a set amount of money every month putting into your investment account, you're going to buy varying. Uh, amounts of shares. And so now you translate this thinking into numbers of shares. And what happens is that over time, through the volatility of the market, you're not going to pay the highest price for all of your shares. You're probably not going to pay the lowest price for all of your shares, but you're going to end up with a lower average cost than what the share price is in the end. So the way that you do this in your strategy And this really works best whenever you're, um, think of your 401k plan or your employer-sponsored plan. You're having money taken out of your paycheck every single month. You're not thinking about it. It just goes in and it buys shares. That is a a great illustration of how dollar-cost averaging works, and it's how people really accumulate a lot of money in those kind of accounts. Um, Not letting their emotions, um, you know, oh, I heard the market's down, you know, today. I'm going to run down to my, down to the human resources department and stop all of my 401k contributions. It just doesn't happen. So you should be that disciplined in your in all of your investment strategies, and that can help you to achieve a lower cost. This also is a principle that we use in our strategy. So when you're getting ready to, if you're from in an all cash position and you're getting ready to build a uh, portfolio using our strategy, then we encourage you to. Um, do something to buffer the volatility of the first year because what I typically find in talking to people is if they have a really negative year, a negative first year, it sours their view about investing going forward. On the flip side of it, if they have a really positive year, it makes them a little bit overly optimistic. So a great way to get in is to buffer that volatility in the first year. And so if you're going from 100% cash position, what you can do is you can say, make a commitment that I'm gonna get fully invested to whichever asset allocation model I've chosen over the next six months. So you divide your total by six, and then you start on day one, putting one sixth of the money to work. Every month on the same day, whether the market's up or down, you're going to continue that discipline strategy and you're going to get your portfolio built. Now, if we see um, extraordinary volatility, let's say that um, something happens like what happened with COVID and we saw you know, a 30% drop in the market in a very short period of time, well, Rather than being scared and calling off your plan, you may want to accelerate your plan a little bit. So if you're in the second month, rather than doing one-sixth, maybe you do um, one-third or you do two of the six plan payments. Maybe you speed it up a little bit. So that's a it's a great way to help buffer that volatility. So if you're if the market is higher in a year from when you started your plan, you know, you're gonna give up a little bit of return. But on the flip side, if the market is down um, a year later, you're not going to experience as much of a downturn. So it helps to buffer that volatility and it helps to really, um, you know, come into an investment plan with a with a good 
good train of thought. Be there, folks. Uh, as always, good to be here with you all. Hey, we do not have the ag report today, though it is on the website. So if you're looking for the ag report, that is the best place to find it. Coming up next, folks, we've got Jason McDowell joining Shanna Burt for the remainder of the show. You don't want to miss it. Uh, it's great to be here with you all. As always, make sure to get your hands on the FISM merch, the spineless weasels, no more spineless weasels, t shirt and tumbler. We're offering those for a donation of any amount to the ministry for the next two weeks. Good to be here with you all. Shanna's coming up next with Jason. More financial issues after this. In a world where financial decisions can feel overwhelming, it's easy to lose sight of what truly matters. But what if there is a way to align your financial goals with your deepest values? And financial Issues has helped us navigate the complex world of finance through a biblical lens. By prioritizing and investing in a way that honors God, Financial Issues has empowered us to focus on what truly matters, our family, our faith, and our future. With financial issues by our side, we can invest knowing that our financial decisions are in line with our values. Take the first step today and become a financial issues partner to access rich online resources, training tools, and guidance for biblically responsible investing. Head over to financialissues.org and learn how to invest your money in a way that honors God. That's financialissues.org. Navigating through investment options can be challenging, especially when you're determined to uphold your God-given values. Every dollar you invest is a vote for the world that you want to live in. Let your values guide your investment decisions and help to shape the culture in which we live. Become a beacon of light and pave the way with biblically responsible investing. Timothy Plan, where faith and finance collide. Before investing, carefully consider the fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the investment company. This and other important information can be found in the fund's prospectus. To obtain a copy, visit timothyplan.com or call 800-846-7526. Read each perspective carefully before investing. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. The opinions and recommendations expressed on this program do not necessarily represent the opinions of the station or any of the program sponsors. Additionally, all products or services offered by the program sponsors may not be known by the program. Welcome back to Financial Issues. Thanks for sticking with us. I'm your host, Shanna Burt. You know, one topic that we talk a lot about on this show is taxes. So you'll you'll hear me say a lot that I think taxes are going to be higher in the future than what they are today um, because of a couple of things, because the government can't manage its own lunch money, much less the trillions of dollars we trust them with to manage um, every single year. And um, the debt that we're in, I mean, that's just going to be something that continues to push spending higher and higher and higher. So the government doesn't make money. They only appropriate money. They, um, we the people have given them the authority to collect taxes from us and the authority to spend that money as they see fit through passing laws. So because of the state that we're currently in, I just don't see how we can have lower taxes perpetually going forward in spite of all of the campaign promises that politicians are making to, to lower taxes. Now, I'm a proponent for low taxes, but hey, we've been so irresponsible letting these politicians run up all of this debt. We got to pay the bill. We've got to pay the bill that we've allowed to happen right under our noses. So, when we talk about that, we talk about how it's a good idea that if you're in the 12% tax bracket, it's a good idea to consider moving money out of qualified accounts that have tax deferred status. So tax deferred just means tax postponed. It means that you're not paying the taxes today on that money, but you're going to pay the money 
uh, the taxes on that money later, plus you're going to pay taxes on everything that has grown. So there is a window right now while we still have a 12% tax bracket, but there's also um, so if you're motivated to do that, you you would be interested in knowing that there's an upper perimeter um, for creating taxable income that you may want to consider staying under if you're um, within a few years of starting Medicare. So we've got our, our friend Jason McDowell back with us today to, to talk about this topic. So Jason, welcome. Thanks for coming back. And can you start by just giving our listeners a baseline refresher um, about uh, who grumpy old Aunt Irma is? <laughs> <laughs> Irma is the government saying, hey, if you make too much, you have to pay more in premiums, really in a simple way. So Irma is an acronym that stands for the Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount, and that is a fee you pay on top of the Part B and Part D premiums. So it's really just an increase of uh, your premiums for Medicare Part B and Part D. Um, And that's if you hit the yearly income above the annual threshold. So there's these sort of brackets that Irma has that uh, can let you know where those sit. And where this matters, especially for FISM listeners, um, is the approach of tax planning and moving money out of qualified accounts to non-qualified accounts. In that case, you have to be what we call is IRMA sensitive. So what IRMA uses is the modified adjusted gross income. And so uh, recommendation, of course, is definitely talk with your tax advisor about this and where it can affect you if you are moving money out of qualified accounts, non-qualified accounts, um, to talk to them about the IRMA brackets and make sure that uh, if you are doing that, that you're staying within the limits. Um, Medicare uses a interesting two-year delay to it. So what you're doing this year, if you are uh, on Medicare and you are moving money, um, what you do in 2024 will could affect premiums in 2026 if you go above certain annual thresholds. So that's where we see that. And the reason for all this is that we believe taxes could be higher in the future, and that's definitive with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the current tax law expiring at the end of next year. So we got an election, we got a lot going on, and just as a refresher there, how do we know taxes are gonna be higher? Well, if it expires, standard deduction gets cut in half immediately taxes will be higher for everybody. Uh, The other part is just tax brackets changing as far as percentages. We lose the 12 for the 15, and there's some other areas, but we do know taxes will be higher just based off this current law expiring, so. right. So open enrollment season is upon us. Um, Open enrollment, a lot of times for people at work with the benefits that their employer offers, they have this season of of going through and getting to reelect what they want to have for their benefits next year. Um, Also in the private markets, health insurance markets, but also for Medicare. So um, there are those who may be venturing into Medicare territory for the first time ever. Jason, can you give our listeners like a baseline refresher on the different parts of Medicare. Absolutely. So uh, the first part is free and we'll call that that's called part A and that's going to cover hospital care. So that doesn't have a premium attached to it, which also means that uh, Irma is a possible increase to existing premium. So that would cover in part B and part D. So part B is going to include part A hospital care. And then Part B will include the physician and many other services with it. And then Part D is really just the co- uh, drug coverage. That also has a smaller premium depending on certain uh, uh, thresholds there. And then there's Part C, which is, uh, we like to call it like insurance products. Um, it's a medic- called Medicare Advantage. And those are provided by private companies there. Those plans are approved. Um, they're specific. They may add a lot more that a individual might need that Part a, B, and D doesn't really cover. So it's very specific to states too. So it gets very, <laughs> very specific to where you live and how Medicare is handled in that state. Yep. So. You know, I think in, in today's uh, environment of higher prices because of the inflation that we've experienced over the last few years, it's uh, this is a, a very important decision making time for people. And, you know, they we, we've seen health 
insurance costs go up. We've seen health care costs go up a lot. Uh, we've seen all insurance costs go up a lot in the in the last few years. And so I think this is a um, big decision facing a lot of people that may be listening to us. You know, and um, one of the things, one of the alternatives that we offer, even for people who may be going into Medicare, is to maybe consider just taking the original uh, Medicare because it's not free. We paid for it. <laughs> let's be let's be clear about that. We paid for it over all of the years. We paid for it. Our employer has paid for uh, the the Medicare coverage that people that you know we get whenever we turn uh, sixty five years old. So it's not free. It, nothing is free. Everything is paid for by somebody. Just be very very clear about that. But an economical um, and probably even a better option for healthcare is to consider Samaritan Ministries. So Samaritan Ministries has been a longtime friend of this ministry. It is the uh, option that this ministry chooses for to take care of the healthcare needs of our staff. And it is uh, a health sharing organization. And Jason, you're a member of Samaritans as well. I just wanted to now of course, not in the realm of Medicare because you're far too young for that. But just okay. in general, what has been your own personal experience with Samaritans? Uh, fantastic. I have a very unique uh, testimony with it that I'll just provide. Um, so I have a two-year-old do- two year daughter now, but when we found out that my wife was pregnant, um, I went to check back on the, the windows to, uh, <laughs> I should have had the maternity care uh, on our Samaritans. And so of course when I did it, I go, oh no, it might be too late. So of course we missed it by about a week, but there's another option that Samaritans is, um, that allows for uh, maybe if you missed a window, like for us with the maternity care, uh, it's called special needs and it's for those that are doing outside of the traditional monthly uh, sharing in healthcare with uh, their particular plans. And so like uh, all of the grandmas and the other family members that loved it, they uh, participated in that and it allows someone to submit some bills that are outside of coverage for those on the outside to give a little bit more. So that actually ended, uh, that resulted in about 60% um, reimbursement to our costs for uh, our care with our the do- uh, birth of our daughter. Now I'm not using that as a number that's gonna work for everybody. I'm just saying this was my particular case for Samaritans and it allowed for recuperation um, with something that they didn't cover. So that was a unique experience for us and um, it was really, really helpful. So. We appreciated. We're very appreciative with that. That also works for people that aren't on Medicare. If they're looking for something else, supplemental, they're outside of Part A. Um, like look at Samaritans. They do have plans that way that will help care for those. And if things aren't cared for in that plan, that special needs is uh, great. It's a great second option there um, to help with those costs. So. Yeah, good stuff. You know, your testimony illustrates um, the point that we make a lot of times that using health health sharing ministries is doing health care God's way, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, we think about the early church. I mean, can you imagine, um, you know, having insurance through one of the traditional health insurers and then, you know, here's your bill for your premium. And by the way, do you want to um, help? such and such pay for their sex change treatment or you know, something like that. So, I mean, it's it's ridiculous to think that somebody in, you know, just the general market is, is going to be charitably inclined just to help somebody else with anything else like they do uh, in Samaritan Ministries. But you can rest assured that you'll never be asked to pay for somebody's abortion or somebody's gender affirming care or um, silly things like that. So, that's good. Well, thanks for joining us again today, Jason. It's always a pleasure to have you on and and share your your wisdom and your experience. Well, folks, we are coming up on the end of the program today. That's it for us. But Lord willing, we will be back uh, tomorrow to remind you that time is getting short. The master, Jesus, he's coming back. And there's going to be a test on how we handled the time, talent, and treasure that we were trusted to manage. We want to be here to help you be found a good and faithful steward with the things that you were trusted to manage. I'm your host, Shanna Burt. Tune in uh, more this week for more Financial Issues. Check us out in the meantime at financialissues.org.
If we ever forget that we're one nation under God, then we will be a nation gone under. Thank you for joining us. This has been an FISM production.